My first guest uh, tonight uh, is considered to be one of the most trusted uh, people in American broadcasting. Uh, he is heard on over 120 radio stations. Uh, he helps callers solve problems that they cannot cope with, everything from squirrels in the attic to dishonest landlords in the attic. Um, welcome, please, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Bernard Meltzer. Nice to meet you, sir. Have a, have a seat, if you will, doctor. Uh, I, must ah. have, I must tell you that I've been uh, enjoying, your, enjoying your radio show, and I have a question. In honor of this occasion, I put on my bow tie. It looks, it looks very nice. It isn't every day that I have the honor of appearing on a David Letterman show. Oh, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let me ask you what kind of a doctor you are. Oh, in the field of economics. Uh -huh. So this is a, a Ph.D. degree. Yeah. Yeah. And how did a gentleman who uh, is an expert in economics become a radio talk show host? Well, actually, of course, I started out way back a long time ago when I was a lot younger and a lot more handsome as a civil engineer. And then I went through a number of professions as a city planner, as a banker, as an economist, as a financial expert, as a professor, and a couple of other things. Yeah. Now, how did you get from that to being on uh, radio? Well, the way I got to be on in radio is one of the stories of, uh, let's say, Hollywood usually tell stories like this. In Philadelphia is WCAU, yeah. CBS, it's a talk station. Powerful, 50,000 watt, clear, clear channel. channel. What happened is, one Friday night, a chap who has a program every Saturday morning comes to them and says, I have news for you. I just got a phone call. I have a new job. Goodbye. I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. So they got very panicky. After all, Saturday morning. So they thought of Bernard Meltzer, because I had been a guest on there a number of times. And they said, would you please take it? And not only that, but they gave me $50. That made wow. me a professional. Yeah. You understand that? And you get paid. Anyway, <laughs> I took the program. I got through. I started at 10, got through at 12. I walked out. And I said to the station manager, how did I do? And he said, Meltzer, he says, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, I've been in radio for a long time. Your program that you've just done by far is the worst program I've ever heard in my life. That's how I got started. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if a guy tells you that it's the worst program, how do you get to, to come back the next night? Well, what happened was I walked out very, very depressed. Depressed, more yeah. than that. I was supposed to come back the next Saturday. And I said, goodbye, I'm not coming back. Friday morning, the phone rang. He said, are you coming in tomorrow? And I said, stop making fun. And I hung up. Uh -huh. <laughs> he called again. He says, uh, are you coming in tomorrow? And I said, my ego trip is over. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm coming down and talk to you. And he walked in. And he said, unless you come back tomorrow, you threaten my job. Now you listen when somebody says that. I said, tell me what happened. He said, first of all, he says, you remember I told you, you stammered and stuttered and ruined every commercial? He says, I expected to have make goods for everyone. Make He's, goods meaning people wanting their money back yeah, or right. make good on the spot. You or do up. it over again. Yeah. And uh, he said, the surprising thing is nobody wants to make good. In fact, to get rid of them, he said, I quoted a rate double and triple what we're charging. Mm. He says they're willing to pay it. Yeah. Well, that's money. By so the way. a radio legend was born right then and there. And uh, not only that, but the thing that also happened, CBS had a secret team in town to survey the station. He didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they sent a report up to New York saying, uh, this man is a good communicator. Don't lose him. Mm. Yeah. So just chance. And now you're, you're not only in New York, but you're all over the country, right? People yes, can listen to you. on NBC TalkNet. Yeah. We're now, uh, coast to coast. And you answer questions about anything, right? Well, almost anything, not quite everything. Have you ever had uh, this advice that you dispensed backfire on you? Have somebody later come back to you and said, you know something, uh, I should not have listened to you and had my elbow removed or whatever. <laughs> not that I know. Yeah. And uh, people I've had come close calls, but, not, but nothing, nothing like that ever happened. People actually come to the lobby of the radio station and ask you to take care of things, don't they? Well, yes. See, what we do on a show, uh, we extend what I call a helping hand to those who need help. When you have a powerful 50,000-watt microphone in front of you, mm. you can do things for people that they can't do themselves. Big things, little things. For example, let's some, somebody's fighting with a 
department. Let me interrupt you here, sure. uh, Doctor, because we're uh, having some time trouble. Maybe you can help us with that, by the way. Uh, uh, we're going to do a commercial, and we'll be back, and uh, Dr. Bernard Meltzer will finish this story. And then we have questions from the audience. <laughs> the program. This is uh, Dr. Bernard Meltzer, and uh, tell us what you were uh, beginning to tell us there, and I interrupted you. <laughs> My mind has gone blank. Yeah, mine too, come to think of it. What was, <laughs> anybody remember what we were talking about? It was the, uh, oh, uh, people come down and, uh, into the lobby and ask you to help them out down there. Oh, I, I started. Thank you, Steve. Will, okay. thank you. I started to say we use the power of the microphone to help people of all segments, big and little, and very often we have very, let's say, tragic cases where people will wait in the lobby for me because they need immediate help. I do whatever I can. I glad, I'm glad to do it. So you actually, you don't try and duck out the back like uh, Joe Namath did. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> My problem is getting out of the studio. Yeah. See, very often it takes two, three hours to get out of the studio. Oh, yeah, I can imagine that. Well, that, yeah. uh, that must be a nerve frazzling. No, you, you know, remember old Harry Truman said, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Right. This is the price you pay. Yeah. And you pay that price. All right. Do you, do you want to tell us what happened or do you want to take uh, questions? I'll do anything you say. You're the boss. Okay. Uh, there's apparently some conjecture on that point, too. But let's, uh, <laughs> uh, let's just go right. We have uh, studio audience uh, members fill out these questionnaires, and this okay. is similar to what you do on your radio program. Uh, this um, uh, question number one We have squirrels out on our terrace. And uh, obviously uh, we brought just one heard with the them tonight. Yeah, uh, we just heard it. Um, nothing uh, we've done uh, to get rid of them has worked. We're going nuts. Oh, that's cute. Uh, <laughs> help. Now, what was, what's the solution to get rid of the squirrels on the terrace? Well, of course, the squirrels are getting in the house somehow or other. They're, they're actually in the house. Well, in the terrace. They're, in, they're where? Where are they? Well, no. They're outside. Well, what's, they can, you can leave them outside, can't you? Well, if they're outside, you have no problem. That's right. Don't feed them. Don't feed them and they won't come back? That's right. Now, if they get inside, how does she get rid of them? Well, if they get inside... They're like feeding your porch. Well, well ma'am, don't you think that'll kill them? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get enough cement and those squirrels and they'll be, they'll be gone. What if they get inside the house? Well, if they get inside the house, you have to find out how they get in. Yeah. And uh, you... No, this is important. It's very hard. It's very hard because squirrels have a way of getting in which you can't find. You've got to find how they get in. You have to drive them out and close it up, and then they won't come back. Yeah. That's all. Okay. It sounds silly, but it's true. But now what they're eating her terrace. Now what can they do to get them to stop eating the terrace? Well, stop feeding them. <laughs> no, they're not feeding. You're not feeding these squirrels. Oh, well, by the you? way, is your terrace consists of what? What kind of terrace? Radishes. The wood floor. Wood floor. They're eating the wood. They eat barbed wire. <laughs> Squirrels are eating you sure wire? you're not confusing termites with... The <laughs> are, they, are they wearing gang jackets? These are... <laughs> Wait a minute. Even... <laughs> Tough neighborhood. But getting, I know getting rid of squirrels can be a difficult problem. I'm sorry to make, make light of this. Uh, uh, I have a 50-year-old supervisor who continually makes sexual passes at me. If I meet with her in her office, she is very seductive. What should I do? If I want a promotion, should I comply? I don't want to break her heart, <laughs> oh, but I do want to move up the, uh, uh, the corporate ladder. ladder, the corporate oh, yeah. ladder. This is from a young man, a 25-year-old male. Well, he has a very tough decision to make. One will affect his life, you see. Yeah. And uh, that's a personal decision. We don't ever give that kind of advice. You know why? You never give this kind of advice. No, you don't give that kind of advice. You, you back off it because you are in a personal situation. Different people react differently. Hmm. to a situation like that. I don't know. We don't usually run across problems like that. Oh, really? You don't handle I thought you handled everything. You don't handle everything. No, not quite everything. Okay. Uh, let's move on. I, I hope that clears it up for you, sir. Uh, do we have time for one more here? All right. Um, have a loose... Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm sorry. You have can't a, ever read that, no, can well, you? No, it's difficult to read there. Yeah. Have a loose rear axle bearing uh, in housing can't be fixed with an oversized... Can it be fixed with an oversized bearing? <laughs> Let's pass that off. <laughs> you do this. 
No, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to make you nervous, doctor. But you're 0 for three. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have anything here. <laughs> I'm not an expert on automobile mechanics. Okay, so you, so squirrels, automobile, and personal lives, and termites. All right. Well, I am an expert on termites. An expert on termites. All right, we're going to go away for station identification. We'll yeah. be back with Dr. Bernard Meltzer. <laughs> Coming up in this next half hour, Melvin Dumar will be here, also George Miller. What, what advice would you have given Melvin Dumar? <laughs> You're talking to me, aren't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, I'm embarrassed. I would ask you, who's Melvin Dumar? Melvin Dumar is the guy who <laughs> claims that he uh, picked up Howard Hughes in 1967, and then several years later, somebody dropped off a will of Howard Hughes, uh, in which uh, a substantial sum of the f uh, part of the fortune was left to Melvin. And uh, he then... Uh, dropped it off at the Mormon church, and then, uh, anyway, the, the will was tossed out, and he didn't get a nickel. Well, I would say rethink your fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't have squirrels. That's the important no, thing. He doesn't yes. have squirrels. Man has no squirrels. Um, uh, tomorrow, Richard Price will be here, uh, Broadway usher Thelma Moore, and comedian, actor, producer Don Novello uh, will be here. Uh, this, of course, is Dr. Bernard Meltzer, and we're taking questions from the studio audience. Uh, let's just keep on going. You said that you're more in the area of finance and business and so forth, right? And city planning, city and planning. construction, and All right, engineering, well, let, let's see, now, and banking, and banking, money, now, and a lot of other things. Let me just try this one on you, because... And education. We have a, a co-worker who smells bad. His, smells bad. Who smells bad. Is this an area you want to get into? No, I, I okay. don't get into bad smells. Uh, okay, my wife and I just gotten married and have been having problems with furniture deliveries. All right. That's a consumer problem. That's good. That's right. Every time a guy delivers the furniture, he smells bad. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, every time we have, every item we have had delivered has been broken or damaged, and the store refuses to take them back, uh, but wants to repair them instead. That's a, this is a real problem you could handle. What do you do? Well, the, the, see, the brat part here, well, you uh, furniture is a very crazy way. They get the money before they drop off the furniture. Yeah. And this is the customary uh, way of operating in the trade. As a result, the consumer is in bad shape. They have the money, and there's no way of getting it back unless you take them to small claims court. To take them to small claims court, you have to bring along experts to show that the furniture could not be repaired in a reasonable way to bring it, make it equivalent to new. So in a way, you're at the mercy of the store when it comes to the furniture problem. Because the remedy is more expensive and more time-consuming than it's worth, so, usually. So how do you guard against this uh, ahead of time? How do you guard against it? Say I buy a table, I want it delivered, they've got my money, they've got my table, All right. what do I do? You guard against it, they deliver it, unpack it, take a look at it before you hand the money over. Because usually they deliver it, they get the check, or the, the certified check. They won't take a check mm -hmm. because they're afraid you'll stop payment on a check. They get a certified check of cash and disappear. Then you're in trouble. So what you do is you have them unpack it, examine it. If it isn't right, don't give them the money. Yeah. That's, that's your protection. So you, you should just think a little ahead of time before you shell out all the dough. A little bit, yeah. Uh, sure. Listen, doctor, it was a pleasure meeting Thank you. you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank Dr. You. Bernard Meltzer, ladies and gentlemen. have some funny stuff for you then. Tonight on this program, uh, now this woman is an amazing success. She's very young. She's 24, 25 years old from uh, Great Britain and a, a smash hit over there and, uh, and soon will be the same here in this country. Right, Bill? Absolutely. Okay. Her name is Tracy Ullman. We'll be talking with her. Also, the owner of uh, Ma Maison, a restaurant in a little... Excuse me. Whoo! Good Lord, I thought for a minute someone was going to have to Heimlich me. <laughs> Gee, <clears throat> Good heavens. Would you have done that, Bill? Would you have jumped in here and... Not on your tin type, Dave. <laughs> really? You wouldn't have helped me out if I oh, was... of course. Oh, I didn't know what you meant. I'm sorry. Well, 
Well, all of a sudden, everything kind of sealed off in there, and I thought I was uh, going home, as they say, you know. Yeah. All right, let's get back to it. Uh, this man owns a fine restaurant in Los Angeles. His name is uh, Patrick Terai. The name of the restaurant is Ma Maison. Is that close? That's Pronounce nice. that correctly? Uh, also, gentlemen who are here to uh, race their bicycles very, very slowly, and uh, comedian Rita Rudner. We have an amazing show for you now. Please say hello to Paul Schaefer, folks. Thank you so much. What a thrill. What a thrill to be here. And I got to say, David, you look fabulous. You look like you're ready to start off a very happening week. Uh, and what else? And what else know. is new? I don't know. I thought I was going to die there a few minutes ago. I felt this, uh, what do you call it, your esophagus? That's I right. I think my tie is too tight, and I thought I was going... Close you know who's up. across the hall right now, right this very minute, who's across the hall? I heard who's there. Well, Joan Collins is over there. and it, No, she won't come over here. We've, no. We've asked her, and we've asked her. In other words... No. In fact, as she left the building, she still may be there, but uh, we've, she's been on every other show in, free, in the free world. <laughs> she won't come on this what show. What show is she doing today? She's over there at, uh, just helping Willard set up the well, weather map for tomorrow. She's not even, <laughs> not even on a show. And our show she won't do. Oh, no, she won't do our show. Why do you think that is? Does she have something against us? Well, I'm, well, obviously, sure. She must, apparently, she's seen the show. Didn't buy <laughs> No, but she won't, uh, she won't. In fact, let me put a, a check mark. We may have to sue her. All right. <laughs> now, uh, we, got a, uh, we got a letter from a famous New York City radio personality last week, threatening, not threatening, implying legal action if we didn't stop doing something on this show. Really? Yeah. Can you speak about it legally? Well, I just did. I just, but I can't tell you any more than that. But we're going to sue him, too. We're going <laughs> to... Just, you got to beat him to the punch. I'm, t I'm just tired of being a pushed around. And by the way, if you're thinking of suing us, we'll, we'll sue you first. And, and, <laughs> and these lawsuits, we start, you know where we start, don't you, Paul? What is the basic We start at 1.7 million. Start there. That's where we start. So if you have any idea, if you're, if you're licking a stamp, going to send us a suit, forget it. You're going to get a 1.7 million suit right back. So we'll get Joan. We're going to sue her. And we're going to, this guy operates on a 50,000 watt clear channel radio station here in New York, and he's bullying us a little bit. No, no, that don't go anymore. 1.7. Okay. Um, thank you very much. And, and over the weekend, I bought a new car. Now, well, congratulations. Thank you very much. The only thing I have to say about buying a new car, car salesmen are very nice people, genuinely friendly, helpful guys. Well, I, I don't want to tell you what kind of, just a car, you know. So, uh, okay. but then after you consummate the deal, it, it takes you all weekend to get the cologne off your hands. Mm. It's just awful. So, okay. <laughs> Is there anything I've left out? We got a good show tonight, don't we? Swinging show. I sense that I frightened the audience. Uh, you're afraid you're going to be named in some sort of suit, aren't you? No, no. It's, you, you, we're on the same team, folks. We're on the side of law and order. All right. Uh, keep me posted. It, let, let me know if she goes out into the hallway. Oh, she has gone, of course. Not too busy to do it. We'll just double that. That'll be 3.4 million. Or so. Every show. She's been on every show. She was on the Today Show, Good Morning America, on the Live at Five, on the Regis Philbin Show, the Tonight Show, the Merv Griffin Show, cable shows, Canadian shows. <clears throat> she ain't coming here, though. <laughs> I'm tired. We're not going to be pushed around anymore. I just, it's going to come to a halt. What are we doing now? Uh, See, everybody's scared now, aren't they? They're just, <laughs> well, whatever you want, Dave, you... Uh... Hell, I've been doing this for a few hours. Huh? <laughs> <laughs>